how's the tea wine coming along? So we started this one back on June 29th. Today is July 28th, which makes it about four weeks. Now, at first glance, I can already see there's little bubbles coming up the side. There's some movement in the airlock. That doesn't necessarily mean it's still fermenting, but the little bubbles up the side, That's they're a good usually indication. a good indication. Let's do a close-up of those little bubbles. All right, so as you can see there, the bubbles are still coming up the side. There's a rim of bubbles right there. You can see some of them breaking. Yeah, it's still going, but it's okay. We're going to take a test and see where it's at. Got my poor man's wine thief. Turkey baster. Which, by the way, basting turkeys really isn't the best thing to do. <laughs> but that's a different channel. Mm -hmm. A few observations right off the bat. It's still pretty clear. It's very bubbly. There's just bubbles coming up in here. So some of it's degassing. Some of it is it's still working. Uh, we do have a 1.020 gravity at the moment, so let me record that. I'd actually probably be really happy if it stopped at about this point, but I don't think it's going to. So let me just pour off a little tiny bit to taste here. And the rest is just going to go right back into the fermenter because everything's been cleaned in. The fermenter bucket of sanitization! And we're not racking this or anything today, so I can just pour this back in. It doesn't matter if it upsets the least because I'll probably give it a swirl anyway. So let's put an airlock and a bung back in this before we give it a taste, just because that way, you know, anything floating around in the air or anything doesn't get in there while we're talking. All right, so we have all that back in. This will go back under the desk for a couple of weeks till we check it again. But in the meantime, let's see how it's doing so far. People have said that it tastes almost like a fruity wine. Now, I know young, it probably won't taste as good as when it's aged a bit, but... It's interesting. I don't really know what to make of it yet. I haven't tasted it either. Almost a citrusy feel. Yeah. Um, so maybe that's the fruit they mean. When I think fruit, I think berries for some reason. But if they're thinking citrus, I do sort of get that. Almost like a grapefruit. I swallowed that all kinds of wrong. Not because it was bad, but because it <coughs> just went down the wrong pipe. All right, I think I'll live. I wish I had another taste, because I want to say that was pretty good. I liked it. Yeah. It gets the Derek a seal of approval. It tasted <laughs> like tea with a little bit of sweetness to it and almost a citrus. Like, if we used Earl Grey, this would probably be amazing. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. It was... But it kind of had a citrusy feel already, and you got that the multi note of the fermented black tea coming through. That's this is really interesting. I was told it's going to taste horrible, young. Nope. I don't think so. This is actually quite good. So I can only imagine that this is going to get better in time. But uh, this, like I said, this is going to go sit for a couple weeks. We'll see you then. So it's been almost three weeks since we last tested this, and it was at one point zero two zero. Let's see what it is now. What it is is very clear. Interesting color, too. It's like golden. It doesn't really look like tea anymore. Well, it's not. It actually has gone down by two points. It's 1.018. That's close enough for me to say, yeah, I think it finished a week ago and I just didn't get to it soon enough. So I'm going to pour off a little bit for us to taste in a moment. And we're going to discuss what we're going to do with it. So what I want to do is determine, is this going to be too dry? Does it need anything? Do we, you know, does it need additives, basically? It, um, it doesn't smell very good. <laughs> I, I'm just going to call it honestly. Oh, goody, let me smell <laughs> Yeah, here, smell this. <laughs> yeah. It's it's got an odd smell that I can't quite figure out what it is. I, it doesn't offend oh. me. Okay then. <laughs> I love it when we have different 
uh, responses to things because that's just that's the spice of life right there. You know, it's kind of cool when we disagree, but um, taste different things. It's awful. Don't taste it. She apparently really likes it. Okay, the more I smell it, the more I'm getting a little bit of tea. I already know she likes it. <laughs> I'm going to be my own person. Okay, I don't love it, but I see what you like about it. It has a bit of a tea flavor. I get the sweetness. It's actually quite carbonated right now. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of effervescence. I think this needs something. He's going to ruin it. No, it needs like a citrus or something, like a couple of the, the zest maybe. You want the orange or do you want lime? I don't want lime. Okay. I'm thinking a little bit of our orange zest in secondary. It might actually be a nice... It just needs a little bit of rounding out and brightening up. Because it's got a little... Here, you can drink it. It's not my favorite. I'll just be honest. But if she likes it, hey, that's great. I tend to be a little picky about certain kinds of alcohol. Certain flavors just don't do it for me. But what's weird is I really like tea. I probably drink more tea than she does. All right, so I'm going to pour this sample into this fermenter. And we're using one of our wide mouth gallon fermenters because they're a little bit smaller and I don't want too much headspace. So we're going to go with this. Uh, a lot of people have asked, do I have to siphon? Can't I just pour it? You can. It's not really recommended. We've done it a couple of times when there was really not much other way to do it. Or, you know, honestly, if I just felt like showing you a primitive way of doing things. But realistically, it's... Uh, a good way to add oxygen into your brew, which is not a good thing for your brew at this point. Now, this is probably, well, yeah, I have to figure out the ABV of it. This has enough alcohol content to not make vinegar, but that doesn't mean it can't oxidize and produce off flavors. This flocculated really nice. Flocculation means the falling out of suspension of the yeast. It made a lovely yeast cake at the bottom. Really, really easy. I was able to put it all the way to the bottom, and I still have a half inch before I see any lease really there at all. That's just kind of awesome. Okay, so we've racked it. And as you can see, this is probably about the ideal situation for headroom. It's all the way up to here. Whoa, it's raining. It just started raining. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> Crazy. Anyway. It's just up to here for headroom, which is perfect. There's as little oxygen as possible contact. So, before I put the airlock and lid on, I do want to put in a little bit of this. This is our own homemade orange zest, okay? It has been dehydrated, and I'm not using a, uh, even a lot of it. Maybe just a pinch like that, like a, what is that, a half a teaspoon maybe, if you crunch it up? And I'm just adding this to give a little bit extra. If you don't have dehydrated you know, homemade orange zest like we do, it's okay. You can either make your own or just use fresh zest. It's perfectly fine. Don't put orange juice in it, though. I think that would overpower. I think it's too much. This just needed a little bit of brightness, and that's what I was hoping the orange would bring. Now we're just going to stick a lid on it and let it sit. This might go for um, another couple weeks. You know, I want to see that zest do something in there, and I want this to clear out some more. It's a little bit cloudy. I think it's got some ways to go, and uh, we'll be back with you then. So this was started about two and a half months ago, roughly. So we added some orange zest last time, and now we're ready to take a final reading, see if this has changed at all, and take a taste of it to see, is it ready for bottling? In total, this is now about 10 weeks old, so it's it's been going for quite some time. The smell is way different than last time. It's more heady now. We're going to need a testing glass. So I'm just going to take a reading. We have tested it twice already. It was 1.020 and 1.018, and the last test was about three weeks ago. So I want to see, has it moved since then? If it hasn't, then it is stable enough to rack and bottle. And we just want to know, does it taste good enough to rack and bottle? We have lift off. We have lift off. All right, there you go. And let's just see here. That's reading 1.018 to me. This has not moved. It is stable. It has done fermented. It, it is done fermenting. 
Just pour off a little sample here. Maybe a little more. And that looks like we can probably rack right into bottles, don't you think? There's a little... Yeah, we can, we can, we can go right into bottles. He's being daring. Live dangerously. So I'm just going to pour this into the first bottle. And I'm okay with using this sample and pouring it in here because everything here has been sanitized in. this in a Belgian beer tasting glass and there's a reason for that these are shaped just right so you can get the aromas good and they're not too big and you can see everything in there really nicely you give it a little swirl like that it funnels the aromas and it makes you feel Ooh. fancy it actually smells of honey now I remember last time I wasn't a big fan of this that was just like three weeks ago but now it's definitely like tea with honey in it she smells really nice. I get that slight citrus, though. That little bit of orange is coming through. It kind of smells old-fashioned. Hmm. Okay. And I know that's a really weird descriptor, but yeah, it is. at first, <laughs> at first, I was thinking, oh, that's odd. And then I thought, well, that makes me think of what old-time medicine would have. Oh, this is like. this is starting to sound really awesome. So. I'm going to smack him. Like, I have the honey, but I have the alcohol, oh, okay. and I have some herbal essence and stuff. And so I'm th I'm just imagining what you would make in a kitchen to put these different elements together to make somebody feel better when they're feeling sick. When hmm. That's what I meant by old-time okay. medicine. Taste it. Now, Derica liked this last time. I wasn't a huge fan, as I recall. She's not giving anything away, is she? Book a face! Okay. Would not be my first choice to drink. And I'm okay with that. However, much nicer than I thought it was going to be. The, um, wow, the sweetness really gets you up front. It's, it, it tastes sweeter than you would think for 1018. Mm-hmm. I'm still getting a really sh uh, harsh, um, bitter note from the tea. But we're not going to go any further on these tasting yeah. notes because that's not what this video is about. But what I do want to do is fill you in on um, what the ABV might be. So this started at 1.102, ended at 1.018. That leaves 84 points of gravity spent throughout times 135, which is the coefficient of choice for city steading. And that gives me 11.34% ABV. Do we know what yeast we used? I do not have that in my notes. I need to start putting that on my notes. So magically, the yeast we used will appear here. If I can figure it out. So it's 11.3, I'm just gonna say 11.3%, good enough for homebrew. So, we tasted it, we racked it, it's clear enough. I, I don't think it needs any adjustments, do you? Time to bottle! So Brian, in his manly strength, is going to affix our bottling wand to the end of our mm -hmm. autosafen, so we are prepared to bottle. Because it takes manly strength to do this. I am we. I cannot do this. <laughs> okay, then. All right, so when you're using a bottling wand, which is the thing with the little tip on the end, some of them aren't spring fit. If, you, if yours doesn't have a spring, it'll just, as you push it, it lets the beverage flow. With a spring tip though, you want to make sure you push it down in the bottle before you try starting a siphon. In this case, I'm just going to go about halfway down. She's pushing I'm it. pushing. She's so pushy. And I know we got little bits in the bottom here, but those are just orange zest. I'm just going to go all the way to the bottom. The hose wants to take it. Just. I don't want to hold it. There we go. Now I can do this. I have found that with most bottles, you want to put your bottling wand in the middle of the bottle. On the corners, it doesn't seem to do as well. Corners. There's no corners in a bottle. It's like <laughs> the end, like the side bottom. The edge. The bottom edge. Don't live on the edge. 
the outer circumference of the bottom of the bottle. It's very pretty. It's a really nice color. Looks like tea. It really does. Looks. This is basically hard sweet tea. I mean, put a little lemon in there and it's a hard old Arnold Palmer. So in case we didn't mention it, look at the pretty color. I mean, that is just gorgeous. I don't know how well you can see it, but it, it, the light just shines right through it. It's gorgeous. It really does look like tea. It looks a lot darker to you guys than it does to us. But four full bottles. Two of these are one liters and two of these are 750 mils. So when you add that up, that is 3.5 liters, right? Which is darn close to the 3.75 liters of a full gallon. So we had very little loss in this one. And that's just part of the game. You know, you're going to have a little bit and it's okay. What are we going to do with these now? We're going to let them sit. Well, <laughs> one of them, we're probably going to do a tasting soon. Yes. And then uh, one of these is going to sit for a whole year. The other two, eh, we might let them sit a little while. We might drink them. Who knows? But uh, if you like this video, we have about 300 videos of wine, cider, meat, and beer making all over our channel. Thank you for liking and subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.